Young. Here is our letter tonight, and our correspondent's name is Phyllis. Now, she says here, why is it so all-fired important to have to think of others all the time? My husband keeps telling me that I spend too much time thinking about what I want and feel and like and don't like. Well, what's wrong with that? If I don't think of me, who's going to? That remark certainly rings a bell, doesn't it? I don't suppose there's a human being alive who hasn't asked that question at one time or another. I know I have. And this is the answer that I got. Because if you don't keep thinking of others, you'll be dwelling too much on yourself. And the result of that is complete one-sidedness, complete selfishness. And then the next step, well, let me show you a picture of a woman who was well on her way to taking that next step. Her name was Eve. <laughs> I know you love them. Oh, you know them. And you hate them. <laughs> well, all right, honey. All right, in that case, just forget the 20s and come and dine with us Monday night instead, huh? And I won't take no for an answer. All right, sweetie, I'll see you then. Now, that is marvelous. Jane and Harvey Sloan met the Kennedys last year in California, see? And Jane says that Harvey says he can't stand Mrs. K because she never lets anyone else get a word in edgewise. <laughs> now, Madeline, you know as well as I do that Jane Sloan never shuts up long enough even to take a breath. Am I right? I must admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, these people need another drink. Good enough, but as far as the Sloans go on Monday night, uh, not so good. Why not? Well, darling, you know I have to be in court Tuesday morning. Oh, we'll send him home early. <laughs> early in the morning? Oh, honestly, Arthur, you're impossible. Bigger, bigger, bigger all the time. Honey, Madeline's glass needs to be filled up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, thanks, Arthur. We really must go. Oh, no, you can't go. I, I thought we'd all go out to dinner someplace. And then maybe, maybe take a drive afterwards, huh? Eve, in this weather? Oh, yes, that's just the point, darling. I love to drive in the rain. Oh, I've got a better idea. Why don't we drive up to the island, huh? And spend the whole weekend in our beautiful Victoria monstrosity. I know what we can do. We sit around in old clothes in front of the fire. Oh, we can have a wonderful time. It's out of the question, Eve. Which island were you referring to? Long Island, Haiti, Martinique? You know, this gal's got a million of them. You old stuffed shirt. The one in Connecticut, of course. The one we own, the practical one. Two days like this and the waves are in the front living room. We had a lovely time at Christmas. Mm -hmm. If you like rat races. <sighs> Darling, what's the matter with you? Don't you feel well, hmm? Eve, I feel just fine. Mm. Well, you've been acting so funny, I'm worried about you. But, Bruce, I don't want to worry about you, too. Now, you and Madeline are coming with us, aren't you? Huh? Well, there's nothing I'd rather do, Eve, but I got a consultation in the hospital in about an hour. Oh, And no. a probable operation the first thing in the morning. All right. Then we'll just take Madeline. You can take Madeline, dear. She has mm. two children with dentist appointments. Now, Arthur, aren't they disgusting? They're so organized. So PTA. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eve, dear, but we really must go. No, I'll get right. my coat. But you're both so capable. I feel like the last days of Pompeii. And we're not going to Connecticut. You talking to the Martini boy or to me? Both, I guess. Just thinking out loud. Ah, could you come and see me at the beginning of the week? Why, what's the matter? Do I look sick? Now, don't jump the prognosis. How do you know what I want to talk to you about? Well, I don't. What are you two muttering about, huh? Well, uh, don't go telling everyone around the stock club, huh? but uh, I may need a lawyer. Oh, I'm glad it's you, Bruce, because from the way my husband's been glooming at me all evening, I thought maybe he thought I needed a lawyer. Oh. <laughs> Come on, dear, now, and stay where you are, both of you, and see that you hold hands. Oh, no, I'm going right with you. I don't want to miss five seconds with you two. Because you're two of my very favorite people. Here's your coat, honey. Uh, oh, that's Eve's dear. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, call me tomorrow, will you? I certainly will, darling. We've got a divine. Oh, yeah, sweet scum. Thanks Good so night. much. Good night, Bruce. Bye, Eve. Thanks Thank for coming, dear. Selfish things. Wouldn't go to the island. Well, never mind. We'll go by ourselves and we'll have Eve. a wonderful time. Eve. What? Will you please come here and sit down a minute? I want to talk to you. What were you and Bruce mumbling about? Nothing. I didn't discuss this with him. Oh? I think we ought to live apart for a while. 
So you do want a divorce. I don't want a divorce. You're in love with someone else, Will huh? you stop being so suspicious? I'm not in love with anybody else. Oh. You just don't want to live with me anymore. That's right, I don't. Not for a while, anyway. Oh, look, Eve, we've been over this a million times. For years, I've been telling you, I can't keep up this social whirl and, and be a good lawyer at the same time. Ron, you're a brilliant lawyer, just brilliant. For a million times, you've told me that you'd try and cooperate, and every time you've broken your word. It wouldn't have taken a brilliant lawyer to win that case that I lost this morning. Any lawyer could have won it if he'd taken time to prepare it. If he hadn't kidded himself into thinking that he could operate on two hours sleep the night before. So that's my fault too, huh? Look, Eve, I never wanted your money or your lap of luxury or you your... Match? Or your friends for clients. I never thought it was necessary to see Paris every spring, to have that island in Connecticut, this apartment in New York, a house at Palm Beach. Four phones in each of them, every one of them ringing at the same time. Strange. It has rung all evening. Yeah, I know. The silence is deafening, isn't it? Arthur. Arthur, please, let's drive up to the island. You can read or sleep or do whatever you like, and we'll be alone, all alone. Alone? Yeah. Like at Christmas time, we went up there then to be alone. It wasn't an hour before you were on that phone calling up 24 people to come out. You know something? You can't even live with yourself, can you? Why don't you just say you're in love with someone else and forget about it? I'm not in love with someone else. If I were, I'd tell you. <laughs> I'd like to believe that. I'll bet she's telling you your wife doesn't understand you. That you're a frustrated genius. And you should be on the Supreme Court now, except for me. Is that right? You can think anything you like, but I've got to get away from you because you're dragging me down. You, you don't know how to live. You've got to have a bunch of people fawning over you all the time. You know something? I don't think you've been alone for five minutes in your whole life. Arthur. I know you didn't marry me for my money or my friends or what I could do for you. But it has given me a certain amount of pleasure to be able to do it. I've done everything I could. And now you want to kick it all over. Well, you're welcome to her, whoever she is, right now, this minute. Eve, will you stop it? Stop it! Well, you're the one who stopped it. You got the keys to the car. No, Eve, you're not going out in the car. Arthur, it's you... my car! <laughs> that again. Art, I'm glad you're phone. I did want to talk to you, and I don't think it ought to wait. Where are these, though? Out. Well, you shouldn't have let her. This is pneumonia weather. Did you ever try to stop my wife from doing anything when she really wanted to do it? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Eve? Art, the girl is sick. Sick? <laughs> she never felt better in her life. Oh, her body's all right. What are you getting at? Why do you suppose she's always on this social world? I don't know. I've been over it with her a million times. She won't stop going because she can't. It's kind of a compulsion. She won't listen to reason. Oh, reason's got nothing to do with it. Eve laughs too much, runs around too much, travels too much, sparkles too much. Why? It's the way she's built, I guess. Well, then somebody's got to do some rebuilding quick. Because it isn't normal to keep clinging to the merry-go-round, grabbing every brass ring, afraid to get off. So... Ah, did you ever look at it this way? Maybe it's because Eve was an only child, and a lonely one, with a lot of money. Maybe somewhere along the line, she got the idea that no one liked her for herself, but just for her money. Then she started dwelling on herself, thinking of no one but herself, indulging herself. Her thoughts, her acts, her suspicions of other people. You know, self-indulgence breeds boredom, Art, and uh, boredom, this merry-go-round. Look, if you're asking me to reason with her, you come to the wrong man. No, I don't want you to reason with her, but tonight when she comes home, I don't think she's coming home tonight. No? We had a little discussion after you left. I told her I thought it'd be better if we lived apart for a while. 
I can't go on. My nerves are shot. My work's going to pieces. You know, Eve, she didn't understand. She said there was another woman that I wanted to divorce. And she ran out of here. When? About ten minutes after you left. Well, where'd she go? I don't know. She had Connecticut, the island, on her mind. Bruce, what's going on? Is she headed for a breakdown? Worse than that. What do you mean? If she had a nervous breakdown, it would have been a lot better. What are you getting at? You see, Art, a nervous collapse indicates that anyone in a strong emotional conflict does just that. Collapses, gives in, subsides in order to gain strength again. To renew the battle for balance. But Eve's kept going and going. She's never broken down. That's just it. We've got to do something, Art. I'm afraid she's on the verge of losing her mind. I be asking you that. How did you get in here, anyway? <laughs> what a silly question. Oh, now look, here I wouldn't try to brazen this through if I were you. Well, it's very dark out. In a storm like this, you could have come to the wrong place, but how did you get in? Oh, you stole my keys, didn't you? Why, certainly not. These are my own keys. Really? And look here. You're wearing my house coat. Oh, you're carrying this a little too far. Maybe you do have one. Oh, no, there's only one like that. It was custom made for me. Oh, my dear. You're afraid, aren't you? No. I am not. And this is my house. Your house? Yes. Oh. Oh, it's you. Well, naturally, you'd say it's your house. Because you took him. And you've come to tell me it isn't my house anymore. It's his and yours. I've never seen you before in my life. You know, they all say that to me. They all say, I don't know who you are. I never saw you before in my life. And then they all say, this isn't your house. He isn't your husband, they're mine. Now, why do people do that to me? Why? I think you're out of your mind. You're insane. Out of my mind. People can tell you that long enough, they can make you believe it. And then they can try to put you away someplace. They can try. I'm in my home now. No. I've often wondered what I'd do if you came here. And there were just the two of us alone. Now, wouldn't it be easy? I could bring him back and save my marriage if I killed you. Yes. Yes, it would be. Oh! Oh! My leg. My hip. I can't get up. You hurt yourself. Well, you were meant to stay here. I stood looking in my mirror. I will. 
You are insane. Don't say that again. All right, all right, I won't. Please, please, I've, I've hurt my leg very, very badly. Oh, I... oh, I'm sorry. You're in pain. I... Well, I'm going to help you no matter what you've done to me. But I haven't done anything to you. I don't oh, even know you. I'm going to help you. Yes, okay. I am. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, don't need me. Oh, don't hurt me, please. Ah, you tried to run away. You fell. It was just like somebody's hand reaching out to stop you. I didn't do anything to stop you because I knew you couldn't run away. Well, you know, you're very pretty. Just like I was. Please, take your hands away. No. Ah! Oh, thank heaven. Thank God. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I have visitors. Good evening. This is this Mr. Mrs. Marin here? Mr. Tompkins! I saw your lights burning. Mrs. Marin's car parked outside. Thought I'd better check. Mr. Tompkins, I'm in here! Lucky you made it. <laughs> the roads are all flooded, and I'm to pass the word along Please, the causeway may give me any time. Uh, by the way, there's a general alarm down the village. I'm to pass the word along. Seems a woman escaped from the state mental hospital. Oh, is that so? They uh, think she's around this neighborhood. So Mr. I... Tompkins! There she is! You're talking to her! Mr. Take it easy now. Sure, bolt the door tight. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Sometimes it happens that way. Oh, suddenly you find you're alone. You're frightened. And you're not pretty anymore. Not me. You said I was selfish and conceited and suspicious. He said I was all those nasty things. No, they say that's why he isn't in love with me anymore. I, I, I think he's in love with you. Oh. Do, do, do you really? Yes, I do. You really think he's in love with her? You're lying. No, I'm not. It's a trap. He loved me. Is that why he told him to take me away? Hide me away? I don't know. Look at you. It's like looking in a mirror. A hateful, deceitful, lying mirror. <laughs> Oh, I remember when we fought that night. Everybody loved me then. Even my husband. Oh, he had so many friends. The telephone never stopped ringing. And then one day, he told me he didn't want me anymore. 
Oh, he tried to pretend he wasn't so, but I knew, I knew. He fell in love with another woman. Can you imagine? He told me there was no other woman getting no. married. Yes, yes. He said it was me. No. He said I was empty inside. <coughs> he said I didn't know how to live with my... Children. No, no. I didn't know how to be alone. <laughs> I'm not alone now. Oh, I'm not like you. I'm not like you. I'm not. <laughs> but the water's rising. Maybe it'll come into the house. I'm going upstairs now. Oh, no! No, don't leave me! To be alone. No! No! Don't leave me alone! Can you make life a lovely rat race? You're pulling me down with you. You know, you can't stand being alone for five minutes. You've got to have people fawning over you all the time. You just don't know how to live. You don't know how to live. It's broken. It's broken. The mirror is broken. No, please. Come in! Come in! Come in! Don't leave me! No! Hey, who's that? That's the description. It has to be We better get out of here. No. It's going to be all right. No. Come with us, lady, where it's nice and warm. No, I'm not the one you want. No! No! <laughs> Please, Eve, please. put her down. You're Wait a minute, mister. This lady's please. insane. The whole state's been looking please. for her. Crazy, she's my wife. Please. Let her alone. Who are you? Take please. your hands off. Do as he says. Please. This is Mrs. Marin. Oh, You've got the wrong please. woman. This is our house. Oh, all right. She's upstairs. Please. She's upstairs. No, it's all right. No. All right. No, the mirror. They're broken. They're going to take me away. No, no. Yes, they are. No, Eve. Please. Eve. Bruce. Hey, look at that. I imagine that's who you're looking for. And I imagine that also accounts for Eve's state of shock, Art. That's what this is. She'll be all right. Sometimes it's the bitter dose that affects the cure. Arthur. Oh, darling, oh, everything's Arthur. going to be all right now. Arthur, it was like... looking into the mirror and... seeing me! <laughs> oh, Arthur, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, everything's going to be all right now. You're fine. Now, Phyllis, I know that we are giving you an extreme example tonight as an answer to your letter. But sometimes, that's what we women understand best. However, there is a quotation here that I've marked by Edward Bulwer Lytton. I think all of us will understand this. The easiest person to deceive is one's own self. True? Visit Loretta Young again next week, same time, same station. <laughs>